What's up, Dragon Ball Super Family? This is Checkmate Fusion, and we got Robert DeCoste with us, who finished top 16 yesterday at the California Regionals. How are you feeling about the event yesterday? Hey, not too bad, man. It's a pretty good time. Set, uh, first uh, event of the format, it's always a good time to play with new cards. What'd you play yesterday? So we ran with the Kid Ku deck. Uh, I think a lot of people were looking at this and thinking it's going to be a really powerful deck, and uh, I, I think it didn't disappoint. That's fair. What were your matchups like? Uh, well, I mean, I had a variety. I, I, I was kind of hoping to see a lot of meta, well, previous meta, and uh, I saw a good variety uh, between new and old decks. So, like, uh, round one was uh, Green Goku. Round two was a bye. The opponent didn't show up. Three was against uh, Nova Shenron. Four was uh, Hatchak. Uh, five was Oceana Shenron. Six was Cell Reboot. And seven was Kid Ku. Wow, that's a pretty big spread. Yeah. What would you say your hardest matchup of yesterday was? Uh, hardest matchup was probably the Cell. Uh, Green, I think, really kind of checks this deck with the hand control. Uh, unfortunately um, for the Cell player, uh, he did not get a good start, and I was able to capitalize. And what matchup do you think was the easiest for your deck? I think it was probably the Oceanus match. Uh, I think I went first, and uh, it, it's just... It's a lot of pressure really up front, and the deck just couldn't really uh, compute with that much. So. I appreciate it. All right, let's hop into the deck profile. Yeah, so uh, we got our, our lovely SLR leader. Uh, so the leader, uh, for those of you who are watching and don't know, the front side is really quite simple. Uh, you can take up to one life, search your deck, uh, and then discard and put a skillless a uh, cost of three in the in the drop. That's important because you get to look at your deck. Uh, that knowledge is pretty crucial to how you navigate your game. You get to check how many skillless are in there, uh, check for your SCR, other other pieces that are like important to the matchup. Uh, and so just that knowledge alone is really powerful. So uh, a turn one unimpeded look at your deck is always always really good. On the back side. Uh, so you awaken by playing a Z extra uh, by going to four life. Sorry, old school awaken four life. Um, so on the uh, when you awaken, uh, it's a draw two leader. On the back side, it has a uh, simple uh, simple auto that you can play a skillless from your drop or sorry from your hand or your Z deck uh, for free once per turn. It has another auto that is not once per turn. That is anytime you play a thirty k battle card, uh, you will. Uh, uh, minus something 15. And then the final uh, skill is that when you play a 30k battle card, once per turn you can draw a card. So uh, I said that kind of out of order, but if you read the card, it all makes sense. Uh, okay, so super great. I mean, the leader is way overtuned. You'll find out. Uh, so we run six of the one drop openers. We see I, I did a three three split. Uh, so party hostess is the only way to search the deck for cards. So like this is like a super combo searcher. Maybe you need a chow to on turn one, whatever the case, or turn two, whatever the case is. So Bulma top five, Saiyan or Earthling four or less, pretty much searches out the entire deck except for the SCR and the super rare. Uh, Bulma support is just a simple draw one, and then you can pick up a skillless. Uh, from your by putting her in the drop, you can put a skillless into your hand. So uh, both are pretty relevant i do like the party host is a little bit more because of the search uh but ultimately you still just want to see one on turn one each time so yay bulma she's always doing the same stuff in every color and every archetype um uh, bandai loves her we all love her say no more right all right so the skillless package was pretty straightforward we ran six and honestly six was a little high uh so two launch and uh, sorry two ox and four launch it was fine. Uh, there were a lot of times where you're drawing them late in the game. You're like, oh, I don't really want this, or they're clumped up in your hand. Uh, maybe entertain a little less, but uh, I think no more than six. Uh, this is the bread and butter of the engine, and I'll talk about that a little bit later with the other cards. Uh, the most underwhelming card in the match, in the day, in the day was Tian. I think I played it once. Uh, so Tian has two functions. The first one is the activate main, which is to play him when you have three more energy and you get to play a skill list from your deck, which will trigger the leader to draw as, as well as minus 15 on something. Uh, the other, uh, the other skill of the TN is the auto, which is when you are swinging with the Krillis, you can combo it from your hand or the field to give that skill as crit. Uh, so 35k critical, typically. Uh, this card was banned two years ago in, in the, in the Ocean, in the Sin Shenron deck for a reason. At first, I was on the train of this card is too overpowered. But ultimately, a minus one from your hand proved to be too much uh, in a deck that doesn't really draw naturally. So I stopped critting with it. 
uh, after testing. I was like, there's no reason to crit, uh, unless it's like a cooler mill or a hatchback or something, you know, a control decks. So ultimately, this card became a charge target or uh, a side deck target or something like that. So uh, unfortunately, pretty underwhelming. Wasn't a huge fan of it, but I, it has its practical use. There's no doubt about it. All right, the SR. Yay. One of them, the Goku. Okay, a couple things to know about this card. First off, activate main. If either player has a 30k or more battle card in play, you can play this card and it will um, it will uh, destroy a KO, a battle card, 30k power or less, ignoring barrier. Whew. It also plays a 30k from drop. So in combination with the leader, uh, if you were playing the game, you would pay two, you would have this come to play, this would recur from the drop, so you have a bunch of autos that trigger at the same time. Your leader can draw, you can uh, KO a battle card 30 or less, ignoring barrier, and then you also get two instances of minus 15 for each of these 30Ks coming into play. Um, and because all of your autos are triggering at the same time, the turn player chooses how to do it. So that's really important for sequencing uh, as you're playing this deck and as you're learning this deck. You gotta know, like, hey, your opponent has an SCR in play, right? You know, Beast Gohan or whatever the case is. You gotta know to minus 15 first, then KO 30 or less, right? Uh, and then and then the others can go to a unison or they can go to a, another battle card and play, whatever the case is. This card is snapped. This card's really, really good. Um, and it's and, and again, the most important thing is like you can play it uh, using your opponent's cards, right? If they have a 30k or more in play, you can you can play this card. Fantastic card, uh, just really really good. Um, okay, Chaozu. I think this card is probably a real issue um, in the format. Uh, it really gate keeps a lot of decks because if you're going first, um, let me let me explain the card first. It's a counterplay. The counterplay says, if you have a 30k in play, you can play it for free. Okay? Otherwise, you can pay one for it. The auto says you can... Uh, the auto says you can uh, play a skillless from your drop and then trigger your leader. Okay, cool. So what does that mean, right? The skillless plays, it draws a card if it's the first time. The Chaozu is a counterplay, which means you can play it uh, for one energy. Like, say when your opponent plays their unison for one marker and then your leader will neg that unison before they get to do anything so decks that awaken with a unison on one can't do that anymore decks like trunks that rely on the vegeta to awaken can't do that anymore because your opponent went first and they have a chaozu in play and a skillless in the drop because the leader said so so like this is a really gatekeepy card and later in the game uh uh you, you're obviously often going to play it for free as well so um, it's really, really, really powerful, and I think it's uh, uh, we're going to see some interesting stuff happening with it. The only thing is you can't counterplay it for free on your turn. You have to pay the cost. It's only reduced on your opponent's turn. Okay, next, the Bunny Girl. We love the Bunny Girl. Um, we thought this was going to be banned. It wasn't. <laughs> uh, and it makes this deck even more powerful. Anytime a card is removed that's an Earthling, um, you can trigger this card to play a Earthling 4 or less. Guess what? All the skillless cards are Earthlings. So is Chaozu. So you can uh, chain a Chaozu into a skillless, which would draw you a card. Um, and then you also generate a blocker. Uh, the, and it, it's... Yeah. Say no more. It's really good. It fits really well in this deck. It is a little, um, a little powerful. All right, we did some small techs uh, to the Gohans from the Gohinks uh, line. Sometimes it turn two play. You just play this. Your opponent can't clear it. Then you have a really good attacker on turn three. Um, I personally didn't play this. I don't think I ever played it once. Uh, maybe I play it to draw, but the point the point is uh, it's a pretty good card. I did end up signing it out a lot for other techs. It is a 50 card list, so you're looking for uh, ways to trim the list down uh, as the game goes on. Uh, ultimately, it's a really good card. A lot of you should know it because we we covered it on my profiles with Go Hanks in the past. Another tech is the Legend Special. This card is great. The uh, the Omen, the Broly Omen. So this is Activate Main. Place this card from your combo area in your drop to place a card in their combo area in the drop. So this is like one of those situations where they swing with leader, or sorry, they swing with battle card and you explosive dance. And then they go, okay, cool, I have a leader swing. And they leader swing and they combo one card without any Z to generate that Z so they can continue to swing. You Omen, 
You send their combo to the drop, you send this to the drop, and their turn is over for attacking. Uh, really, really potent, super awesome. Uh, it, it, it definitely is great against Vegito X, if you, uh, you should ask our friend Jose about that, right? Uh, so, uh, Omen was great. I did sign it out some matches, you just don't feel like you need it. Some matches, it's really, really great. Um, we ran Baby. Baby Unison is cracked. Baby Unison is so good. Uh, Vegito Unison got banned, and I was like, ha, huh, we were playing Baby anyways. Uh, I'm running a 4-2 two, a split in my list. I know my teammate uh, ran a 3-3, three, three, and that works just as well. Um, I want to see it. The deck doesn't really draw a whole lot. Like, it just, like, one or two cards per turn. Uh, so you really have to dig deep for it. And I was like, on three, I was like, I'm not seeing it every time. I want to see it on three. Sometimes I just tap out, and I'm like, eh, try and kill me, right? So, um Curbs, it, it, the bean on your leader is really good. The baby gives a plus 1k when you're tapped out. Uh, it, it enables Videl. Then you have a bunch of free counterplays to defend it, like Chaozu and like Bulma. So it's really hard to kind of clear this when it comes down, especially if you absorb a battle card, because it's basically five swings that you have to put into it. Um, so this combination served me really, really well, and I think it helped a lot in the mirror match. Uh, the, the gate section is pretty standard, it's the 4-4 uh, split, testing, explosive dance. I don't think I would change it. I was really happy with the 4-4 split. Um, and you go to 4 life immediately on turn 2, so the, the tokens are active and the explosive dance is active. Um, all right, what's next? Super combos. I don't think I need to say anything else. Some I know uh, my opponent, Carlos, who I played in round 7, played the Bulmas instead. And I wonder how that fared for him throughout the day, if he would change it. Um, I personally like Raditz because it digs to the deck and I want to find my SCR as fast as possible. And of course, what I think is the best red SCR in the game and will be forever. I don't know how they're going to power creep this without banning it first. Uh, the Vegito looks at your leader, or sorry, looks at your opponent's hand, takes a card and just, it's pretty, it's pretty devastating. A lot of times I just played this just to wall up and my opponent couldn't kill me on the crackback. So, uh, tight 50, really good really really effective um and not very many changes i would make to it that sounds pretty good man yeah show us that z deck yeah the z deck is very 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 exciting i think you're gonna really like it uh it's four tn skillless cards <laughs> so this is great because when you play a skillless from your z deck or your hand uh once per turn you draw a card so this allows you to actually draw a card without losing hand advantage uh, so the four is there, and it's important for that reason. Then we have the three non-stop Gokus. This card's pretty stupid, too. Uh, if you have a 30k in play, it reduces down to one energy cost. Um, and then it's a, uh, and it KOs a battle card. KOs a battle card, 30k or less on your opponent's side of the field when you play it. That's significant because red doesn't really KO. That's not its color identity, right? It's always minus, minus, minus. So the fact that you have two cards in your deck that actually KO outside, it, it's relevant. It, it really does make that difference. Uh, especially when you're taking down big, able-bodied dudes. This card also says when you swing, you can activate battle and you can send a skillless from your battle area to the drop, a 30 30k skillless to give this card plus 9,000 and double strike. So it becomes a 25k double strike for one energy. Uh, that skillless goes to the drop and then that that is there for recursion. So when you want a Chaozu or when you want a Bunny Girl, you'll have that skillless down there ready to go. So it's very synergistic with the deck uh, as it stands. Uh, I did run one uh, unison here, uh, the Deity. I did play it a couple times. It is very, very good. Uh, it's a double strike dual attack essentially, or it's a double strike uh, minus your opponent's board 25. Very potent, uh, and it does have barrier and it's 20k, so it's kind of hard to clear. Uh, the, the two is the extra cards. So the first one is the, the super water. So this is how we awaken on turn two. Essentially, you take yourself down to six, and then you play this card. And what it does is it takes two life and it puts them underneath your, your extra card. Uh, so that enables you to go to Explosive Dance and into Super Combos immediately on turn two. Then this card skill just basically says activate battle at any time. You can return your two cards from underneath it to your life and then bean your leader for the turn and this card gets removed. So uh, nice little Sensu Bean effect in the uh, in the in the red deck. And then the backup. So once you pop the super water, you still want to have a red extra card in order to play explosive dance. That's where the 10 10 Kamehameha comes in. So you just reset. Uh, you set this up instead, and now you have a, a plus 15k uh, free combo 
uh, later down the line. So the Z deck was pretty powerful. Uh, and most games, I went through almost all of it. We're talking like this was left, typically. So you're really utilizing your Z deck late into the game, which is fantastic because most decks don't do that. So That's pretty cool. Finally, let's just see that side deck. Yeah, let's see it. Okay, so I really liked the side deck choices here. We went with the third Videl. Uh, uh, just to see some consistency. There are some games where Videl just comes out because it's just not good. For example, the Mirror Match. Kind of useless of a card. Uh, Secret Identity. Uh, we took out of the main board, put in the sideboard. A great sideboard choice. Uh, if you can, especially in the mirror match, if you can warp two of their skill lists, it just completely uh, uh, brings the power of the deck down for it to have that crack back. Uh, two shoes. Uh, just for counterplays, this was great in a number of matches. This is good against Oceanus uh, counterattack, against Depending Friends. Uh, even in the mirror when they're trying to Chiaotzu or, or Bunny Girl, like this can interrupt those lines of play. Uh, slowly, we started to realize that Koitsukai is like at a minimum three staple in this format, uh, which is great. You know, if you don't if you don't agree, that's fine. But like, you need this to push on kill turns. Pretty big. Uh, the one of King Vegeta's Hidden Ambitions, the counter counter, it's really good into blue and into green, specifically green, because they like to dormant for free or they like to unending for free, and you can kind of get them there. Speaking of green, the double Deborah, uh, a lot of times this is really, I, at first I said Deborah can't be good because you're using your energy and you don't have energy to play it. But when you get floodgated and you end up passing with three energy up, and then your opponent comes back and makes you discard cards, you have the energy for the Deborah, so pretty good. Uh, the Begrudging Allies did not come in handy, but that's okay, I'll put it over here. It did not come in handy. It's another counterplay that just warps a three or less uh, when when needed. Uh, I think you have to be at four life for it. The Violet Rays uh, was for the Kid Koo match. I, had, I didn't end up citing it. I don't know why. I don't think it would have been relevant anyways. Uh, the, 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 the match was pretty good. Uh, it just turned sideways at the very last second. And then the two random cards are the Vegeta and the Cell Max. Uh, funny enough, we uh, thought we'd see Hatch, and I did. Uh, I played against our good friend Ivo, and he played Hatch, and uh, and when I had two cards left in deck, and I needed to find that one final swing, Cell Max came in handy. Dropped it for one, swung and he negated, and then I swung it up with a 10k and gave him my 13 card hand to take his last life. Uh, so super cool. It helps you get over the hump on some of those. Uh, but yeah, like pretty solid. Most of the side deck I used throughout the day, as I talked about, some of them I didn't. Uh, and I'm sure there would be some changes for the next tournament if I were to play this. Well, thanks for that deck profile, Rob. Yeah. Do you have any shout outs you want to give out? Uh, absolutely. So like my teammates, check me fusion. You guys are really awesome. We've been testing, uh, uh a lot and all and my Arizona teammates as well. Um, just really putting the work in to put a, uh, to, to check this new meta. We're printing cards uh, weeks before, going to locals, working on new formats already. So it's just really cool. Uh, and a big shout out to uh, to my buddy Alex, who was the Nova player, who clapped me. Uh, I know I gave you some grief about that loss, but uh, for those of you, I'm sure you'll find out eventually. Um, I'll, I'll leave it like this. Um, I got OTK'd by my buddy Alex. Six to zero by a quad strike. I'll let you do the math. You can figure that out for yourself. And if you know the answer and you're not from Arizona, you should post it down in the comments and let us know. How did I go from six to zero playing against Nova Shenron when he quad struck me? So that's a, a big a big plus to him. He, he built a really cool deck uh, and he caught me by surprise in round three. And I was just like, oh, so. Um, but yeah, to all my teammates, to my friends here and, and abroad, uh, it's it's been a great first tournament for the season so thanks thanks see you at the next one yep